Welcome back to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel. Today's video will be on triple negative breast cancer and what you need to know about it. Before we begin, we recognize that breast cancer does not just affect women. Trans men and non-binary people are also affected. However, the prevalence of breast cancer and its associated statistics are not yet available in these groups, which is why many of the statistics mentioned in this video will speak to cisgender women's experiences. That being said, Many of the disease characteristics, diagnostic procedures, and treatment options mentioned in this video are worth paying attention to if you're at risk for developing breast cancer, regardless of your gender identity. Breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in women globally, affecting one in every eight Canadian women. For a prevalence rate this high, you might be wondering what the disease is or what your options are if you get diagnosed. But first, let's take a look at the disease in depth. Breast cancer refers to the presence of a malignant tumor in breast tissues, like the lobules and milk ducts. Given this, anyone with breast tissue is susceptible to developing breast cancer. Other factors, like age, hormone levels, economic status, family history, race, and genetic mutations can increase your risk of developing the disease. When people refer to breast cancer, they might think of it as a singular disease. But like any other cancer, breast cancer is diverse in how it presents itself. There are two ways in which breast cancer is categorized, either by location or by protein markers expressed in cells. Of the latter, there are four molecular subtypes, luminal A, luminal B, HER2 positive but HOMO negative, and triple negative breast cancer. Triple negative breast cancer is defined by its lack of estrogen receptors, progesterone receptors, and HER2 expression, hence the name triple negative. It accounts for 15-20% to 20 of all breast cancer cases and disproportionately affects those of African or Hispanic ancestry. TNVC is also associated with mutations in the BRCA1 gene, which is a gene linked to hereditary breast cancer. There are many cell signaling pathways that are dysregulated in TNVCs, such as the canonical Wnt beta catenin signaling pathway, which controls many cellular processes like multiplication, movement, and specialization. When this process is interrupted, it can lead to changes in the way cells replicate, which can then lead to tumor formation. In TNBCs, the Wnt beta catenin pathway is overactivated. Specifically, the Wnt receptor frizzled has abnormally high activity, increasing the activity of this pathway. When Wnt binds to frizzled, another protein called axin becomes activated too. Axin is normally part of something called a destruction complex, which is a collection of various proteins and kinases. When this pathway is inactive, the destruction complex prevents beta-catenin from accumulating in the cell by binding to it. However, without axin, the destruction complex is unable to bind to beta-catenin. This allows beta-catenin to accumulate and eventually move into the nucleus, where it activates other coactivator molecules. These coactivators are responsible for activating a group of oncogenes, which are genes involved in tumor formation. The proteins that these oncogenes produce give rise to the proliferative, invasive, and metastatic abilities characteristic of TNBC cells. Similar to many diseases, treatment of TNBC is tailored to the individual and their diagnosis. Common treatment methods include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and immunotherapy, which all depend on the stage of cancer development. Surgery is often used to remove tumors or conserve breast tissue. Chemotherapy may also be used prior to surgery to shrink tumors or after to reduce cancer recurrence. For larger tumors or those affecting lymph nodes, radiation is used as a follow-up after surgery. Other options include treatments currently undergoing clinical trials, which are continuously conducted to create better treatment options. In Canada, there are currently 24 clinical studies being conducted on TNBC. Extandi, also known as enzalutamide, is a Pfizer sponsored research project that uses four gelatin capsules for the patient to take daily. So far, the results show clinical improvements in about a quarter of the participants after 12 weeks. Extandi also seems to halt disease progression for about 12.6 weeks. This study, along with many others, are continually pushing the envelope forward in order to create more suitable and effective therapeutics for patients afflicted with triple negative breast cancer. Please note that the treatments listed in this video are purely for educational purposes and you should consult a registered healthcare professional for more information on what treatment is right for you. TNBC is a persistent form of breast cancer. However, routine screening can catch it and other cancers early, making the treatment process easier. For more information about screening, treatment options, and current clinical trials, check out the links provided in the description below.